Hello, my name is Donna Whitehouse. I am the Dean for the School of Health Sciences at Nashville State Community College. I am very excited that you are interested in pursuing a career in the healthcare fields. Our health science programs prepare students for a variety of careers, and our graduates are sought after by employers all over Middle Tennessee. In fact, many of our graduates have employment opportunities lined up before they have even completed their programs. This video will walk you through the steps required to apply to your program of interest. Here you will review the courses that are needed, learn about the classes you will take, and how your instructors will prepare you for your credentialing exams. Following the video, you will be asked to complete a survey which provides us with your contact information. Viewing of this video is a requirement for your application, so make sure you complete the survey. Through the survey, you will also have an opportunity to ask any questions you might have about the health science application process. Again, I am so glad that you are interested in a health professions career and that you are exploring that path through Nashville State Community College. Hello, my name is Dr. Beth Youngblood and I am the director of the nursing program at Nashville State Community College. We are part of the Tennessee Board of Regents and participate in the common curriculum with our sister schools from the Tennessee Board of Regents. We have been a successful program since 2012 and are excited to be growing in the future and bringing our campus sites to other locations as well as our White Ridge Road location. We are so excited that you are interested in learning more about our program. We are an associate degree program that prepares nursing students to sit for the national licensure exam to become a registered nurse at the end of the program. And we would like to have an opportunity to meet with you and to discuss our program further. But what I'm going to do right now is to go through some of the most commonly asked questions to get you started and to get you on the right path for being able to apply for our nursing program. So as you can see from our shot on the computer, the School of Health Sciences is where we live. This is where the division uh, comes together and nursing is a part of the School of Health Sciences. We also have programs in central sterile processing, OTA, which is Occupational Therapy Assistant, and Surgical Techs. And so a lot of our scenes that you will see will include a lot of different students. You might notice that a lot of those students have on varying shades of blue. And so depending upon which one of our particular division programs you're in, you may have a different uh, scrub color in order to show which program you belong to. We have an application and admission requirement for all people entering our programs, and it's slightly different from one program to another. So we're gonna go through the specific requirements. If you decide that nursing is not for you, you will want to uh, look at the information for each of our programs because this is specific only to the nursing curriculum. Your first steps are that you should apply and be accepted to Nashville State Community College. You need to be an active participant on the Nashville State campus in order to have an A number. That does not require you, however, to be in a class enrolled at this time. You just have to be an accepted student so that you would be ready to accept a class if you needed to take additional prerequisites or if you're going straight into nursing. So when you apply, at that time, you will be submitting transcripts from other schools that you have attended. Any college work, especially that college work that would pertain to nursing, should be requested so that our records department can review it and decide what is going to be the best for you in terms of your prerequisite work for nursing. You will also register for any prerequisite courses that have not been completed. Some people come to us and never need to take any additional prerequisite courses. They are ready to go straight into nursing and they are ready to go straight into our application process. Others have to complete prerequisite work before they can actually apply to the nursing program. So we'll talk a little more about that and how that looks. When you're preparing to apply, 
you want to make sure that all of your prerequisite courses have been completed and you want to do that within the semester that you submit your nursing program application. We want to make sure that all of those prerequisite courses end with a grade of C or better. If you make a D or an F, sometimes things happen and people have to retake courses and we're okay with that. Your lower score will get replaced with your higher score. Go on and repeat that course prior to your applying so that we can show that you have met all requirements and that you're ready for your application process. The other thing that you will need to do is to take the entrance exam. That is called the ATITs. And the ATITs is actually not administered by us at Nashville State. It is administered through the ATI company. It can be taken in the online format or it can be taken on the person-to-person -person format where you will go into their testing center. The score that you need to achieve on that to be an eligible candidate for the nursing program is proficient or better. So let's talk about those prerequisites. Remember it has to be a grade of C or better and all of the following prerequisites are required. You need to have Biology 2010. That is Anatomy and Physiology 1 and Biology 2020 which is Anatomy and Physiology 2. Most of you have taken that in two separate semesters and that is fine. Only thing I need for you to do is to show that you have a C or better in those two courses. Then you will also have Biology 2230, which is Microbiology, and you will find, if you have not taken your prerequisite courses, that all three of these courses also have additional lab requirements. Sometimes people ask us about online courses and if those are acceptable, and that is fine. It just has to demonstrate that it has a lab component to it. It is fine if that has been done with the use of online um, learning, and we accept that, we just need to make sure that it did have that component to it. Math 1530 is your introduction to statistics. This is your only math course that you are required to take until you've gotten into the program. And introductory to statistics will not substitute uh, from college algebra or calculus or other types of math because it is specific to the things that we do in nursing that you need to understand statistics itself. So that will need to be a statistics course. English 1010, which is English Comp 1, will need to be completed. And Psych 1030, which is your introduction to psychology course. We also ask that you complete at least one humanities elective this may be things like art or music or theater or dance, and you have a lot of things that you can choose from. And you can look on the acceptable humanities electives um, from our website that will tell you what things are uh, able to count for this humanities elective in our program. And then we have what we call kind of a guided elective. And the reason we guide you in this elective is not to be too restraining. We try to give you electives that you might take that could help you as you further your education and pursue a BSN, which is a bachelor's in the science of nursing. And a lot of people will go on, about 75% of our students go on to get bachelor's degrees after they've completed their associate degree here at Nashville State. So we wanna make sure we're preparing you well for that. So you can have any of these following courses. You can have English 2010, which is Comp 2. You can have Psych 2130, which is Lifespan Development Psychology. Or you can have Communications 2025, which is Fundamentals of Communication. You can also have Biology 1215, which is Principles of Nutrition. Most BSN programs require all of those courses. Um, then we've also given another choice here. You can have a second humanities elective. And the thing that this does is sometimes people will come in and have not completed a lot of the other uh, courses that we have listed here, but they may have an introduction to speech. And it may be introduction to speech in the workplace or something that's slightly different from fundamentals of communication, but still fulfills the requirement. This keeps you from having to retake a course that still fulfills our basic requirements. So we have given you a little more um, space 
to have some creativity because a lot of schools have slightly different courses that go in here. Certainly, um, you can have lots of different things that will fulfill this requirement. If you are concerned about knowing what that would be, then we will just make sure that we have connected you with Jenny Heath, who is our administrative assistant and helps us with advising our pre-nursing students. And she will be able to tell you which one of those electives will work. The nice thing about that is if you happen to have six things in that category and you made one A, we will use the A to your advantage to give you the most points we can toward your score that you'll need to achieve. One other thing that has come about as a different and I think a very positive thing for our students is that there is no longer an expiration date on any of our courses, including our science courses. And so you do not have to repeat a science course because your anatomy and physiology was taken six years ago. Um, and we used to have that in all programs across the state, basically. But because it's hard to use scholarship money and financial aid money to repeat a course, we are encouraging you to do some prerequisite work if you need to brush yourself up on those courses before you take the ATITs and then to move on into the program. And we can help you with that if that is an individual concern for you. Let's talk just a little bit more about the ATITs. You can reach the ATIT site from our website, and that is the nursing entrance exam. Many schools use this or a similar type of product. The exam covers basic reading, math, science, and English skills. It lets us know that you'll be able to use what you have already taken from your prerequisite courses to put it all together and have a good foundation for the nursing program. That link that is there will help you to register. That's right there on the website for the nursing program. And if you search for it, it will take you right to ATI's registration site. And once again, you may choose online or face-to-face. -face. Either is fine with us. We do need your scores to come from ATI, not from you personally. And so when you are registering, make sure that you include Nashville State in your uh, schools that you are intending on ad having an admission process with. Any school that you intend to apply for should be on that ATI list. Your scores are good for two years and if you don't like your score we give you an opportunity to repeat it one time and usually we ask you to wait 45 days uh, ATI suggests at least 30 days, but the thought process on that is if you're going to do better, unless you were just sick, you may need to do some remedial work and we want you to spend some time doing that so that you can actually increase the score level that you get. Now, as you are looking down through here, you can see that academic preparedness level score. You, you can score a developmental area, a basic, a proficient, advanced, or exemplary. We're asking you to get at least the proficient level, which gives you 10 points toward your application score. If you get an advanced level, you get 15 points toward your application score. And if you achieve the highest honor, exemplary, which not many people are able to do, but some people are really good test takers, you will get 20 points on your application. So most of our people fall in that proficient or advanced category, and so you want to make sure that you're scoring as high as you can so that it gives you the best advantage for getting into our program. So here's what our application scoring looks like. We base your score on all quantitative data, which means we're looking at numbers. We're not looking at anything from your application that has to do with anything personal. We are just absolutely looking at your numbers because the numbers tell us who's usually going to be successful in our program. The prerequisite GPA is the first thing we look at, and we want to make sure that your GPA of your prerequisite courses only are a 2.8 or higher. So that means if you went into mechanical engineering 20 years ago and you went, whoa, this is not for me, but you have a bunch of D's in that, I don't care. It doesn't apply to nursing. Um, they're there, they're in your comprehensive and cumulative GPA, but they will not be problematic for you in nursing. And so with that, we take this GPA and we multiply that 2.8 by 10 
and that gives you 28 points. So someone that has a 2.8 would have 28 points. Somebody that has a 3.4 is going to have 34 points. So it makes it very easy to determine how many points you would have. Most of our people fall around the 3.0 or slightly higher. And so that's kind of the average person who's trying to get into the nursing program. We do have some that get in with a 2.8 but if you're really trying to strive to get into that upper group of applicants then try to have a 3.0 or above and it certainly is not necessary for you to have a 4.0 and so we don't have very many of those either so try to, uh, to aim for that 3.0 to 3.5 range puts you in a really great place the ati and t score as i already mentioned for proficient you get 10 points for advanced you get 15 and for exemplary 20. And then, once you have either attended an information session or have uh, been able to send in saying that you have watched this video and that you understand the process, you will receive five points for doing your homework. And that is for finding out what you need to know about the nursing program and our admission process. This just encourages people to get the correct information and it gives you some points for showing up and doing what you need to do, doing your due diligence and preparing yourself for the admission process. The total possible points you can achieve is 65. Most of the people who get in our program get somewhere between that uh, 40 and 60 range. And the closer you get toward the 60, the higher up you're gonna be on the list. This is nothing but math, basically. We're going to put you and rank you in order based on your total points. And so the higher you get to a 65, the higher you are on the list. And we're gonna talk about how we accept uh, students and how that looks as well in just a few minutes. Let's go through our classes and course sequence. We have four semesters, so you are never taking courses other than nursing while you're going through the nursing program. It doesn't fit in people's schedule and it doesn't work for their time frame most of the time. Uh, it is a full time process to be a nursing student. In semester one, there is nursing 1710. That's the semester in which we do our fundamentals of nursing. We have lectures, we have labs, and we have clinicals. You are usually on campus or at an activity for fundamentals at least three days a week. Sometimes it's four to five days a week. Uh, we're not telling people that they cannot work at all, but we do realize that those who are able to avoid working very much, maybe a shift a week, do better than those who try to work more hours. So we want to encourage you to be prepared and ready to come in and try not to have to work any kind of full-time schedule or um, you know, over a, a large part-time amount of commitment. In semester two, you'll be taking Nursing 1620, which is Med Surge Nursing 1. You'll take Nursing 1340, which is Mental Health Nursing. And you'll begin your Pharmacology series, Pharmacology 1, which is Nursing 1120. We begin from minute one preparing you for the NCLEX. So with that in mind, we're going to start talking to you about your basic needs in patients, chronic conditions and that's what that med surge nursing one does prepares you to take care of patients with chronic needs and then prepares you to deal with patients that have mental health challenges both inpatient and outpatient as well as learning about the drugs that we give patients by semester three we're going to be working with acute care med surge nursing we will be dealing with patients that are in an acute care setting so more of an inpatient setting at our local hospitals and then we'll also be continuing your pharmacology process and we're going to add to it obstetrics and pediatrics. So we're going to talk about the normal processes of having a baby, being in childbearing, and then the normal processes and developmental challenges of dealing with both healthy and sick children and look at it throughout the lifetime. 
that is a very busy semester. If you were to ask our currently enrolled nursing students, they will tell you that's probably their hardest semester because there's just a lot of things to be thinking about at that point. You can tell there's several courses you're engaged in all at one time. In semester four, this is when we do the complex care of the med surge patient. This is our ER patient, our critical care patients, and you will have experiences in clinical and lab in those as well. You will continue to finish up your pharmacology series, and then we will add some leadership and things about nursing role development in that final semester. And you actually have a class that is designed to do nothing but prep you for your NCLEX exam. So that is what our program looks like throughout there. It is very, very busy, and you are engaged, as I said, anywhere from three to five days a week. Uh, we do have weekend clinicals sometimes. We have evening clinicals. We don't have any overnight clinicals at this point, um, but you will be called upon to have a variety of clinicals. Uh, you will have locations that you may have to drive an hour to get the experiences you need, depending upon where you live. We try to not ever make it more than about an hour from our main campus site, um, but there are times where you will be asked to drive um, to other locations so that you can get the clinical experience that we want you to have. So I've tried to answer a lot of the frequently asked questions as we've gone along, but one of the things people always want to know is, first of all, can I work? And as I said, we will not dictate to you whether you can work or not. We just know, statistically speaking, that the fewer hours you work, the better you do in nursing because it requires a lot of preparation time. Um, also, if you have come to us with experience, that is often helpful. Whether you may have been a nursing tech, um, a CNA, maybe you've been a medical assistant, maybe you've been an LPN already. Um, all of those things will help you. We have paramedics in our program, we have EMTs in our program, and we have a specially designed program for those that are in the LPN program, and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Also, people wanna know about the cost. It's um, something that we have to deal with because school is expensive, and most people, by the time they have finished their prerequisites, have often used up all their Tennessee Promise money may have used up reconnect money. You may have some left depending upon how much you were able to take when you were maybe in high school or previously in your life. Um, but the cost for the actual nursing program, so two years, think about two years, um, is around $10,000. That is a very, very good deal. Um, this is assuming you are living in state and you've been in the state for a year or more and that you have a Tennessee driver's license. Um, $10,000 is what you can count on. That includes your tuition, your fees, your supplies that you might have to buy, like your uniform and your books and your clinical supplies, like your lab bag, maybe your course materials or other things that you need to support. That includes in it your Kaplan examination fees, your required documents that you have to have for NCLEX, your clinical experience participation requirements, such as at the beginning of the program, you have to do background checks and drug screens. You have to have a, a short medical exam. You have to be up to date on your vaccinations and immunizations and health insurance. Yeah, you do not have to have a large expensive health insurance policy, but you will have to have one that at least covers catastrophic events and so they will not let you come to the hospital without health insurance. So that is not something Nashville State controls, that is something our facilities control. Vaccination immunizations are also recommended by our facilities, not by Nashville State. People often ask about COVID vaccines and flu vaccines. If you are opposed to receiving those vaccines, you can, at this point in time, fill out a declination form for the hospital saying that you have chosen to decline for either medical or religious or personal reasons and that has been sufficient. At times things change during the pandemic we saw changes where COVID vaccines were required not recommended and so we just have to take that as a day-by-day -day occurrence but at this point no one is made to get those vaccines and people often ask about that. You do have to do background checks, drug screens, and medical exams. 
Okay, so acceptance, completion, and exam pass rates. Those are other things people want to know about. We begin a new class each fall and each spring. And starting in the fall, we will be back in our newly renovated H building, which I'm un uh, understanding that used to stand for humanities and apparently H now stands for health sciences, because we're all going to be in the health science building together, which will be a really collaborative approach to teaching things in the health sciences. And you'll get to work with students from our other aspects of our division. We're excited about that. And we're going to be starting with a class of 40 nursing students in that semester. So fall has a entering class of 40, and spring will now have an entering class of 40. It has been 25, so that is going to give more opportunities for more students to be engaged and apply and be accepted for our spring semester. So we're going to be roughly taking about 80 students each year, and that's here on the main campus at White Ridge Road. In the future, we will be having programs open up on the Dixon campus and also on the Clarksville campus where we will be able to add probably an additional 20 students at each location is our goal for the future. Um, because we're waiting on confirmation on buildings and timeframes often get shifted, uh, we cannot tell you exactly when that program will open, but more to come as we know. Our acceptance numbers, as I said, are up to 40 students in each entering class, and our completion rate for our students that start with us is around 63%. Now, you may think that that's pretty low, but I will tell you, back when I went to nursing school, it was often less than 50% of the people who started finished the program. We do have some of these people who drop out, withdraw because the timing is not right, and they come back and later complete the program. And so this is just the ones that from start to finish to complete it without any breaks in it, 63%. We are working to um, continue to raise that level and we would like to be able to have that closer to the 70 to 80% mark. Our NCLEX exam pass rates, our three year average right now is 92%, which is excellent. We are above the national average by a long shot and we are above the Tennessee average. Tennessee Board of Nursing likes for us to stay above 85%, which is one of the highest requirements of a Board of Nursing in our 50 states and all of our territories. So our standards are set high from our Board of Nursing and we try to meet those and exceed those at all times. Our students have been taking the newer next generation exam and our students last semester uh, in the that graduated in the December class are doing well, those that graduated in the May class, 97% of them passed the first time around. So that's really good. So if you hear anything about that, we are preparing students for that new next generation exam. I mentioned to you that some of you might be LPNs seeking to come into our RN Bridge program. We have an articulation agreement that is with TCAT, which many of our LPN students come from. And this allows LPNs to come into our program um, with minimal repeating of information, which is good. We accept your degree and you still have to take your ATI and your TEAS test. We put you through a little boot camp to make sure that you don't miss anything that we teach in fundamentals. And if you are able to make the basic requirements uh, and you have met those standards, then we will allow you to go straight into our second semester, which see, saves you three months at least. And for some, depending upon what time of year you come in, it may save you as many as almost six months. So it would give you a three semester program. And those will be conducted in the semester, the boot camps will be conducted in the semester prior to your coming in. And if you have met all those requirements, you get what we call prior learning assessment credits. And so you are given credit for the seven hours of fundamentals without having to complete those course. And so that will be not only a financial savings, but it'll be a savings in time and the burden of having to study extra and go back and repeat things that you may already be very um, well versed in and already able to meet the standard requirements for. In order to receive PLA credit, you have to attend our one day skills and dosage calculation review. It will also have lab checkoffs with it. It'll have dosage calculation exams and the fundamentals review packet. 
Um, the students that have done this prior to now have done very well. There are times where LPNs say, I prefer to go back through fundamentals, and that is okay too. That is always an acceptable option for you. It is left up to you if you want to try to receive your PLA credit, or you can do the boot camp and then say, no, I still think I'd rather go back through it. So it is fine, you have several options, but we will discuss that with you on an individual basis. The student must, in order to get the PLA credit, meet or exceed the minimum requirements put out for that fundamental semester, and the students admitted for the fall semester will complete that during May, and the ones that are coming in or seeking to come in in spring will complete that by mid-August. So we'll have two different offerings in the summer where you'll be able to attend that and see if you can achieve that PLA for the seven hours of fundamentals.